back. Welcome back to the Republican presidential debate. The candidates taking the questions you want answered. Also tonight, you can see what America is saying about the debate. Go to Facebook and type hashtag GOP debate into the search box. Now back to the questions. Americans face security threats at home and abroad. Last year, terrorist attacks rose 61%, according to the Institute for Economics and Peace, with the most deaths occurring in just five countries, Iraq, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Nigeria, and Syria. Dr. Carson, you were against putting troops on the ground in Iraq and against a large military force in Afghanistan. Do you support the president's decision to now put 50 special ops forces in Syria and leave 10,000 U.S. troops in Afghanistan? Well, putting the special ops people in there is better than not having them there because they, that's why they call special ops, they're actually able to guide some of the other things that we're doing there. And what we have to recognize is that Putin is trying to really spread his influence throughout the Middle East. This is going to be his base, and we have to oppose him there in an effective way. We also must recognize that it's a very complex place. You know, the Chinese are there as well as the Russians, and you have all kinds of factions there. What we've been doing so far uh, is very ineffective, but we can't give up ground right there. But we have to look at this on a much more global scale. We're talking about global jihadists, and their desire is to destroy us and to destroy our way of life. So we have to be saying, how do we make them look like losers? Because that's the way that they're able to gather a lot of uh, influence. And I think in order to make them look like losers, we have to destroy their caliphate. And you look for the easiest place to do that, it would be in Iraq. And if outside of Anbar in Iraq, there's a big energy field. Take that from them, take all of that land from them. We could do that, I believe, fairly easily. I've learned from talking to several generals. And then you move on from there. But you have to continue to face them because our goal is not to contain them, but to destroy them before they destroy us. We asked Facebook to take a look at some of the major issues we are talking about and tackling in this debate tonight. This word cloud shows what people are focusing on the most. The bigger the word, the more the talk. One of the most discussed issues in the last month, homeland security. Governor Bush, what is the biggest threat facing America today? It is, I'd say it is Islamic terrorism. And back to the question of what we are dealing with in Iraq, when we pull back, voids are filled. That's the lesson of history. And sadly, this president does not believe in American leadership. He does not believe it. And the net result is that we have a caliphate the size of Indiana that gains energy each and every day to recruit Americans in our, in our own country. And the threat to the homeland relates to the fact that we've not dealt with this threat of terror in the Middle East. We should have a no-fly zone in Syria. We should have a support for the remnants of the Syrian Free Army and create safe zones. If you want to deal with the four million refugees that are, that are leaving Syria because of because of the devastation there, then we ought to create safe zones for them to stay in the region rather than go to Europe. And that requires American leadership. Without American leadership, every other country in the, in the neighborhood begins to change their priorities. It, it is tragic that you see Iraq and other countries now talking to Russia. It wasn't that long ago Russia had no influence in the region at all. And so the United States needs to lead across the board. This president and Hillary Clinton both do not believe that the United States has a leadership role to play, and we're now paying a price, and it will have a huge impact on the economy of this country if we don't deal with this. Thank you, sir. Mr. Trump, in a 2012 debate, President Obama mocked Mitt Romney's assertion that Russia was the top geopolitical challenge facing the United States, saying he was a Cold War dinosaur, now, Russia has invaded Ukraine and has put troops in Syria. You have said you will have a good relationship with Mr. Putin. So what does President Trump do in response to Russia's aggression? Well, first of all, it's not only Russia. We have problems with North Korea where they actually have 
nuclear weapons. You know, nobody talks about it. We talk about Iran, and that's uh, one of the worst deals ever made, one of the worst contracts ever signed, ever in anything, and it's a disgrace. But we have somebody over there, a madman, who already has nuclear weapons. We don't talk about that. That's a problem. China is a problem, both economically and what they're doing in the South China Sea. I mean, they are becoming a very, very major force. So we have more than just Russia. But as far as the Ukraine is concerned, and you could say Syria, as far as Syria, I like if Putin wants to go in, and I got to know him very well because we were both on 60 Minutes. We were stablemates, and we did very well that night. But you know that. But if Putin wants to go and knock the hell out of ISIS, I am all for it, 100 percent, and I can't understand how anybody would be against They're it. Not doing they blew it. up. Hold it. They They're blew up. It. Wait a minute. They blew up a Russian airplane. He cannot be in love with these people. He's going in, and we can go in, and everybody should go in. As far as the Ukraine is concerned, we have a group of people and a group of countries, including Germany, tremendous economic behemoth. Why are we always doing the work? We are, I'm all for protecting Ukraine and working, but we have countries that are surrounding the Ukraine that aren't doing anything. They say, keep going, keep going, you dummies, keep going, protect us. And we have to get smart. We can't continue to be the policemen of the world. We owe $19 trillion. We have a country that's going to hell. We have an infrastructure that's falling apart, our roads, our bridges, our schools, our airports. And we have to start investing money in our country. Thank you, sir. Donald, Donald is wrong on this. He is absolutely wrong on this. We're not going to be the world's policeman, but we sure as heck better be the world's leader. That's a, there's a huge difference where, without us leading, voids are filled. And the idea that it, it's a good idea for Putin to be in Syria, let ISIS take out Assad, and then, then Putin will take out ISIS, I mean, that's like a board game. That's like playing Monopoly or something. That's not how the real world works. We have to lead. We have to be involved. We should have a no-fly zone in Syria. There are, they are barrel-bombing the innocents in that country. If you're a, if you're a Christian, increasingly in Lebanon or, or Iraq or Syria, you're going to be beheaded. And if you're a moderate, uh, moderate uh, Islamist, you're not going to be able to survive either. We have to play a role in this to be able to bring the rest of the world to this, to this issue before it's too late. Assad is a bad guy, but we have no idea who the so-called rebels, I read about the rebels, nobody even knows who they are. I spoke to a general two weeks ago. He said, who's very up on exactly what we're talking about. He said, you know, Mr. Trump, we're giving hundreds of millions of dollars of equipment to these people. We have no idea who they are. So I don't like Assad. Who's going to like Assad? But we have no idea who these people and what they're going to be and what they're going to represent. They may be far worse than Assad. Look at Libya. Look at Iraq. Look at the mess we have after spending $2 trillion, thousands of lives, Wounded warriors all over the place who I love, okay, all over. We have nothing. And I said, keep the oil. And we should have kept the oil, believe me. We should have kept the oil. And you know what? We should have given the oil. To, we should have given big chunks to the people that lost their arms, their legs, and their families, and their sons and daughters. Because right now, you know who has a lot of that oil? Iran and ISIS. You know, Mr. Trump fancies himself a very good negotiator. And I accept that he's done a lot of good deals. So Mr. Trump ought to know that we should not speak to people from a position of weakness. Senator Paul should know that as well. One of the reasons I've said that I would not be talking to Vladimir Putin right now, although I have met him as well, not in a green room for a show, but in a private meeting. <laughs> One of the reasons I've said I wouldn't be talking to Vladimir Putin right now is because we are speaking to him from a position of weakness brought on by this administration. So I wouldn't talk to him for a while, but I would do this. I would start rebuilding the Sixth Fleet right under his nose, rebuilding the military, the uh, missile defense program in Poland right under his nose. I would conduct very aggressive military exercises in the Baltic states so that he understood we would protect our NATO allies and would-be allies. And I might also put in a few more thousand troops 
troops into Germany, not to start a war, but to make sure that Putin understands that the United States of America will stand with our allies. That is why Governor Bush is correct. We must have a no-fly zone in Syria, because Russia cannot tell the United States of America where and when to fly our planes. We also have a set of allies. We have a set of allies in the Arab Middle East who know that ISIS is their fight. They have asked us specifically over and over again to support them. King Abdullah of Jordan, a man I've known for a very long time, has asked us for bombs and materiel. We have not provided it. The Egyptians are asking us to share intelligence. We are not. I will. The Kurds have asked us to arm them for three years. We're not. I would. The Egyptians, the Saudis, the Kuwaitis, the Bahrainis, the Emiratis, the Kurds, all all of these people I know, by the way, understand ISIS is their fight, but they must see leadership, support, and resolve from the United States of America. Well, me, and we must have the, the strongest right. military on the face of the planet, and everyone has to know it. Senator Paul. Uh, uh, Senator Paul, you, you, have, you have already said, sir, that that would be a mistake in not talking to Vladimir Putin or to rule it out. You've argued that, that, that it's never a good idea to close down communication. With that in mind, do you think the same applies to administration efforts right now to include the Iranians in talks on Syria? I'd like first to respond to the accusation. We should, I think it's particularly naive and particularly foolish to think that we're not going to talk to Russia. The idea of a no-fly zone, realize that this is also something Hillary Clinton agrees with several on our side with. You're asking for a no-fly zone in an area in which Russia already flies. Russia flies in that zone at the invitation of Iraq. I'm not saying it's a good thing, but you better know at least what we're getting into. So when you think it's going to be a good idea to have a no-fly zone of Iraq, realize that means you are saying we are going to shoot down Russian planes. If you're ready for that, be ready to send your sons and daughters to another war in Iraq. I don't want to see that happen. I think the first war in Iraq was a mistake. You can be strong without being involved in every civil war around the world. Ronald and how Reagan, would you respond? Ronald Reagan was strong, but Ronald Reagan didn't. And Ronald send Reagan walked away East. at Reykjavik. He walked away. He quit talking Can I finish when it was time? time to quit Can I finish talking. My time? Why does she keep interrupting everybody? Yeah. <laughs> Boy. Terrible. Yeah, I'd like to finish. I'd like to finish my response, basically. And, uh, if I may respond, on the, this yeah, is an important you know, question. Wait, this is this... an incredibly important question, <laughs> and the question goes to be: Who do we want to be our commander in chief? Do you want a commander in chief who says something that we never did throughout the entire Cold War to discontinue having conversations with the Russians? I'm not happy about them flying over there, but I'm not naive enough to say, well, Iraq has, has them flying over their airspace. We're just going to announce that we're shooting them down. That is, that is naive to the point of being something you might hear in junior high, but it's scary. But if you're not going to respond to in a no-fly zone strategy, what would yours be? The first thing I would do is I wouldn't arm our enemies. I wouldn't arm ISIS. Most of the people who want the no-fly zone also favored arming the allies of al-Qaeda, which became ISIS. That was the dumbest, most foolhardy notion, and most of the people up here supported it. They wanted to arm the allies of al-Qaeda. Some of them still do. That's how ISIS grew. We pushed back Assad, and ISIS was allowed to grow in the vacuum. So the first thing you do is don't arm your enemies. Well, the, 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 I might just say it added to this. We, we, uh, I need to add a couple points to this. The first is, I've never met Vladimir Putin, but I know enough about him to know he's a gangster. He's, a, he's basically an organized crime figure that runs a country, controls a $2 trillion economy, and is using it to build up his military in a rapid way, despite the fact his economy is a disaster. He understands only geopolitical strength. And every time he has acted anywhere in the world, whether it's in Ukraine or Georgia before that or now in the Middle East, is because he is testing a weakness. His calculation in the Middle East is that he's seen what this president has done, which is nothing. The president has no strategy. Our allies in the region do not trust us. For goodness sake, there's only one pro-American free enterprise democracy in the Middle East. It's the state of Israel. And we have a president that treats the prime minister of Israel with less respect than what he gives the Ayatollah in Iran. And so our allies in the region don't trust us. Vladimir Putin is exploiting that weakness. 
for purposes of edging the Americans out as the most important geopolitical power broker in the region. And we do have a vested interest, and here's why. Because all those radical terrorist groups that, by the way, are not just in Syria and in Iraq. ISIS is now in Libya. They are a significant presence in Libya and in Afghanistan and a growing presence in Pakistan. Soon they'll be in Turkey, they'll try Jordan, they'll try Saudi Arabia. They are coming for us. They recruit, they recruit Americans using social media. And they don't hate us because, simply because we support Israel. They hate us because of our values. They hate us because our girls go to school. They hate us because women drive in the United States. Either they win or we win. We better take this risk seriously. It is not going away on its own. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Senator. Um, Gov Governor Casey, I want to ask you about China. In particular, hundreds of American companies have been subjected to cyber attacks from the Chinese military. Uh, yet state-backed Chinese companies are growing their presence in the United States. Chinese investments in the U.S., which were nearly non-existent a few years ago, are now over $50 billion. And as my newspaper recently reported, Chinese companies are planning to bid for one of the largest hotel chains in the United States, what would be the largest ever Chinese takeover of a U.S. company. Would you stop them? Let me tell you this, Mr. Baker. In terms of the cyber attacks, we have the capability to not only have a defensive posture, but also to make it clear to people that if you attack, attack us with cyber attacks, we will destroy the mechanisms that you're using to attack us. I want to give you a little trip around the world. I served on the Defense Committee for 18 years. In the uh, Ukraine, arm the people there so they can fight for themselves. In the eastern part of Europe, make sure that Finland and the Baltics know that if the Russians move, we move. In Syria, yes, a no-fly zone in the north on the Turkish border, a no-fly zone on the south on the Jordanian border. Anybody flies in their first time, maybe they can fly out. They fly in there a second time, they will not fly out. And it also becomes a sanctuary for the people to be, and it also sends many messages in the Middle East that we're still involved. Saudi Arabia cut off the funding for the radical clerics, the ones that preach against us, but they're fundamentally our friends. Jordan, we want the king to reign for a thousand years. Egypt, they've been our ally and a moderating force in the Middle East throughout their history. In the, uh, in, in, in the uh, groups of, ba in the countries of the Gulf states of Bahrain, the Cleveland Clinic is opening an operation. Clearly we see the same with them. And in Israel, we have no better ally in the world and no more criticizing them in public. We should support them. And finally, China. China doesn't own the South China Sea. And I give the president some credit for being able to move a, a naval force in there to let the Chinese know that we're not going to put up with it anymore. And in the trade agreement, the TPP, it's critical to us, not only for economic reasons and for jobs, because there's so many people who are connected to getting jobs because of trade, but it allows us to create not only economic alliances, but also potentially strategic alliances against the Chinese. They're not our enemy but they're certainly not our friend. And finally, I will say to everybody in this room, we've been talking about taxes and economics. When the fall comes and we run against Hillary, which would be a disaster if she got elected. I have two 16-year-old girls, and I want this country to be strong. We make promises we can't keep under the bright light of the fall. We will have trouble. We must make sure that our economic programs and our military programs are solid. I served in, the, in Washington as the chairman of the Budget Committee, and we got the budget balance as, and in Ohio as the CEO, and guess what? We got to have a CEO mentality and a way to beat Hillary Clinton and the Democrats in the fall, and our ideas have to add up, they have to be solid, and people have to know we have the confidence to lead America. And as president, I will lead this country as I have before in Washington and in Ohio, and will return both on domestic in international affairs. And I appreciate the opportunity to speak this time, Jerry. <laughs> Thank you, Governor. You. Plenty of opportunities. Thank you, Jerry. All right, and look at the time. Look at the time. Uh, you are watching Fox Business. We'll take a break. Uh, stick around. I think it gets interesting.